Hi folks, this is Rose from In Rose's Garden and today I'm going to make a really pretty crystal and well anyway, I think it's going to be pretty crystal and a pearl necklace um, using this pretty cross as our base focal and um, some pearl sticks. Now the cross, the pearl sticks the little bicones that we're going to have down here and these teardrops I have down here were all in what um, what is called a $9 bead pack from Thunder Horse Descendant. Um, Randy Brown at Thunder Horse Descendant makes these and sells them. So um, I uh, purchased this pack and uh, which had, like I say, the stick pearls, the cross the teardrops and the bicones in it that we're going to use. So let's turn down and I'll show you what we're gonna do. So again, here is our beautiful cross that we're gonna use. This is our focal piece. We're going to use some um, Extreme Flex Medium. It says champagne on here, but it was a um, bad color match thing and it's actually sort of a rose gold color so we'll just use that to use as our base our beading wire now this um, I got a big hunk of 20 gauge wire this is a lot more than I need because what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna take this I'm gonna wrap it up I'm going to use a bicone and a little uh, spacer, then a pearl. Uh, this is a stick pearl. Then one of the bigger and a crystal. Back to a bigger one. Another stick pearl. A little one and a bicone and when I have that all put together it's gonna hang like this it's going to go on this bale so that we can put it together now I'm gonna set these things aside because we're gonna do that last because I don't really want to be stringing with all this hanging from our bale and since I plan on hardwiring it in, um, then we uh, won't want it hanging there. So let's put these items to the side. Let's see. I would have swore I had a little tray here, but I guess not. Ah, here we go. So let's put these things in here so that we don't get them mixed up with the other things we're going to work on. And we'll put this aside. Oh, well, we need the bail out. We're going to use it, obviously, for stringing. So we'll... We won't need this till the end either. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the bail we're going to put a little bit of rubber tubing in it. In fact, let's go ahead and cut that. Now, I got this rubber tubing from Softlex, but I have seen it at Hobby Lobby before if you're uh, in need of some rubber tubing. Now, you can put this around your wires to make a decorative piece. I have some various colored ones that I hardly ever use, but you could do that. I'm going to put this in here to make this smaller and to keep it from rubbing on the wire. Not that it really would probably hurt it. Softlex is a pretty strong wire, so I wouldn't be too worried about it. So we'll just cut that off right there where it comes out of our bale. And I obviously didn't get a good cut on it because it didn't break all the way across. There we go. And we can put the rest of our tubing away. You can tell from the package I use this quite a bit on stuff that I find too large for a regular wire. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take, like I say, we're going to put that in there. Then we're going to take three of our little bicones and put them on either side of the bale. And hopefully I won't run out of my bicones because I only have so many. So then we'll take a, um, a small spacer, put it on either side. And we're going to use one of these uh, peachy colored pearls and a larger spacer and rice bead, uh, rice crystal, larger spacer. Come on, you. Um, another peach pearl, small spacer and then three bicones again. And we'll do the same on the other side. In fact, I'll probably get another tray and as we go along, I'll drop the mount we use on this side over into here so that I'm not, um, not using them all up on one side. So after we got this, we'll do the three. Then we're going to do a pearl and one of these teardrops and another pearl. Teardrop can go over here. Then we'll have another three of these. And we'll be using the big ones between the bigger pieces and the small ones of our spacers on the other sides. Oop. So anyway, that's how we're gonna go. And let's just get started and I will show you what I mean. Now I'm just going to work right off the spool. I do that frequently because I do not like to try and guesstimate how much I'm going to need. So we'll just pull a length out and put a bead stopper over here so that the beads won't sink into the spool and I won't be able to see where I'm at. And we'll just start beading. And I'm going to start with a small spacer. Come on, baby. I'm going to have to cut my nails one of these days. They're getting way too long. Woo! And I'm getting the dropsies already. Not good. A pearl. The large spacer. crystal, the large spacer, and now we're at where I've got this set up right up here. So we'll just go down this line until we get to where we need to be next, which is um, Well, we already showed you what we're going to do next, so. Now, hopefully I'll have enough of these crystals for my plan, but if it turns out that I don't, I suppose we can switch to a clear crystal, because I do have those. So here's where we're putting that rubber tubing on, and then the bale goes over the top of it. And that keeps it, oops, the tubing didn't come all the way. Not only does that keep it from rubbing, but it keeps the bicones from being able to go, to sink right into the, um, into our bale. 
spell. Now you see we're on the other side. See how it doesn't allow the bell, the bell icons to go into the bell there? So now we're going to put this pattern in and then we're going to go until we finish this side up and or we run out of beads, one or the other, which is possible. The whole, frankly, the only beads I'm worried about is the... Um, I have more of the crystals. I have more of the regular pearls. I don't have any more of these type, except for two in each side of my necklace. So I'm not needing any more of these after I have this side done. It's the, it's the little bicones I worry about. Now, as you can see, this is our bottom here where our our, uh, our focal is going to drop down to from here. And now we'll go to this pattern with the teardrop in it. So we need uh, the three little bicones. In this small spacer, the pearl, the larger spacer, there's teardrop. With the tear facing upwards, spacer, pearl. Small spacer and the three bicones. Now let's make sure that I have the things that I need in my dish over here, which is since we went to here. On the other side, it would be three bicones, six bicones in here. Looks like I have them. Two pearls and the teardrop. Now, that's what we need for this section right here. Now we're gonna go up again. Now we've got our three in. I have these as my next set, but I'm debating putting just one of these sets in first. And I think I'm going to do that. So we'll go one little spacer and pearl. Big spacer. Crystal, big spacer, and pearl. Small spacer. You'll notice I'm not dropping the spacers over there. That's because I have more um, if I need them, so I'm not too worried about them. So now we need three bicones. We'll put the three over here and get our three for here. And 
And now we're going to do the pattern with the stick pearls. And that's a little bit different than the ones we've been doing here with Pearl, Pearl, Pearl. We're going to be doing small spacer. What we're going to do is the pattern that we've got in the in the focal down below. So we'll do a stick. Well, sort of, not quite, because, well, yeah, it is. Because it does have the bicone on either side, it just has three. Crystal. So. So now we're back to our three little bicones. One, two, three. And we'll put three on this side over here. One, two, three. Then a small spacer. And now this pattern again with the pearl um, pearl crystal pearl crystal large spacer and a pearl and now we'll want to put those three things over in the tray so that we know that we have plenty of those so pearl crystal pearl and then I'll put my small spacer on and our three bicones. Small spacer, three bicones. And three. So now I want to put those three bicones over here as well. And let's measure this and see how long we're getting. From now on out, we're just going to use the pearl, crystal pearl pattern as we go up, um, depending on how much longer we want to make this. So this is eight and a half, about eight and a quarter. So we definitely need at least a couple more inches because I don't want it to be smaller than 20. But I don't want it to be as long as 24 because that would mean that it would, our cross would be really low. But let's keep going. And like I said, we're just gonna keep with this pattern until we get the length that we want. So we want a small spacer. Oops, well I don't wanna throw away my small spacers, but it seems that's what I'm doing. So pearl, let's move this up so you can see our strand better. There it is. So we have the pearl, now we need the large spacer, the crystal, large spacer, pearl. Small spacer, and the three bicones. One, two, three. And then we'll put three over here. Crystal, two pearls. I'm noticing I don't have that many large spacers left in here. I'm not sure how many are left in my package. So let's take and get the large at least spacers out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
So we have 12 here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Mm, I needed ten, didn't I? Well, just a moment. I think I still have a few here in this package. I think I might have another package of these somewhere, so we'll have to see. Come on. Out. All of you. Now we'll have these two in here and these two here for this next set. So, so small. Pearl. Large. Crystal. Large. Pearl. Come on, baby. Small. And three by cones. So let's see, just as soon as we get these three by cones on, we're going to have to um, put the bead stopper on here and see. Well, first we got to put the three, the two pearls, and the crystal over here. So We'll see its length again and see if it's as long as we're going to want it. And if not, then we will have to find some more large um, daisy spacers. Okay, so let's get out the ruler and see how long we have it now. And it is... Well, it is now 11 and a half, so it will definitely be 22 and probably, well, 23, and then when I get the hardware on, the, it'll probably be 24. So that's probably about the length we want it anyway. So we'll stop here. Well, not quite. I'm gonna put one of the little daisy spacers on this side so that it's got not got crystal right at the end here. So then we're gonna Move these over to this side and pull some more wire off the spool. This is middle point, so we want about that much. So we're pulling it down from the middle here. Let's put the speed stopper on so it keeps not falling. And then we're going to pull both wires together so that we can get the same, pretty much the same length of wire on for the other side as this side. So we'll cut her right here. So then we can put this wire to the side. We don't need it anymore. And now what we're going to do is go... Looks like we aren't going to need all these beads, so I'm going to have to separate them back out. And we had a lot more of the little bicones than I thought, so we're, we're perfectly safe. So that was good. So now that we've got these, we dump this out. This is what we're going to be using now. And maybe we'll just put these in here so I can separate them in a bit so they won't be getting knocked all over the place. And I'll just put them underneath this here. So now what we're gonna do is we got the three bicones. We're gonna go back to our pattern from the other side. Got the three. 
Oh, that's right, I didn't bring out any of the small spacers, so I will need those. Come on, small spacers, come out here. Oh, there was another big one. That's all right. It's fine if we need it, can we have it? Oh. So now we go small spacer. Now we're right here. So we've got it right here. So now we do this pattern with the pearl, the teardrop, the pearl. Pearl, large spacer, teardrop, large spacer, pearl, small spacer, and then three by cone. Should have been the last of it. So let's put our bead stopper on and we will check it all out, make sure it's good, measure it, and then we will put the rest of these things away that it looks like I had an extra set out here. I didn't realize it, but that's all right. And uh, if it's as long as we want, we had plenty of bicones. So let's check. Looks like it is going to be, like I say, that's would be 22, that 23. Once we get the bicone, I mean the jump ring and the lobster claw on, it should be 24 inches. So that's plenty long enough. So, here we go, turn this around. I got more wire out than I needed, as you can see, but I prefer to have more than not enough. Let's drop a couple of uh, crimp tubes out of the tube here. More than I planned on. There we go. Close that back up. Now we'll open one of these sides up and put one of our crimp tubes on and then one of the jump rings, small or large, it doesn't matter which one. The small one is for the lobster claw, the large one is just for hooking on. So then through the jump ring, and if it'll go through anything else, that's great. Looks like it will go through the bicones. So we'll go through here and pull her up. Okay, then we're gonna get our crimping pliers out. I use the magical crimpers and there's a divot in the middle. You want to get your jump ring right in the middle of it and then squish. Then we're going to turn it 90 degrees and squish again and turn a couple more times to make sure that it's all squished as well as you're going to get it. Especially since this gold tends to be a little bit thinner as far as the wire is concerned. So now we want to give it a tug test, make sure it's still behaving. Seems to be fine. So we'll cut this extra bit of wire off right here. Now I know that this will not go in the pearl, so we definitely need to cut it right here. So then let these slide down to the other side here. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to bump the camera. And then we will do the other side. So put on the 
and our jump ring. Now you don't need to put the jump ring on right now. You could just leave a gap in your uh, saw flex, a little loop to um, hook things onto, which works just fine if that's the way you want to do it. Now we're going to feed this through here. I'm going to take hold of the jump ring to use as leverage. Pull. There, that should be good. Let's check to make sure I don't have a lot of extra space sitting here. It's looking good. Hold on to here. Push it down some. Yeah, she's fine. I see I have a gap right here though, so we want to push this down and get this gap out of here as best we can. So we get that out to where we want it. We'll get our um, pliers out and squish. And then turn. Well, it didn't turn. It just stayed in the same place. There we go. Looking good. So get in here and we're going to cut this excess wire off. And then uh, we have to put the lobster claw on here now. So we just go over here to this side, open up the smaller of the two rings. Now I put my lobster claws on jump rings all the time and that is because they have a spring in them that can break and if it breaks then if you have it on a jump ring, you can just change it out. If you do not, you have to restring your whole necklace, which is a bit of a pain. So, there we go. And now we have to just put on our pendant. So now that we have this pretty done, we'll get out our cross and our hunk of 20 gauge wire. Like I said, this is way longer than I need. And we're going to wire wrap this up. We'll just bend this over wherever since I have a lot more than I need. Then we will take our uh, bell making pliers, grab the end, wrap it around, bring her over, bring her all the way over, um, leave a gap in here so you can open and get that in. Feed your cross on, or whatever charm you're using if you're not using a cross. Hold this where it comes together. Get a second pair of pliers and wrap this baby up. Or you can do it by hand if you feel like it. I generally use um, pliers so that I know that I have plenty of space to work with. I've wrapped it three times. Now I'm going to cut the excess off here and tuck it in. That looks pretty straight. So now I'm going to do that pattern that I had said I used, was going to use, and that is the bicone. That's the same pattern we used up above. The small spacer. Come on, you guys. The... Ooh, this is going to give us a problem, it looks like. I hadn't even thought about the fact that these are pearls, so they might need a slimmer wire. 
I'm going to cut the end of this off because it's a little bit um, bent and that might keep it might help it go in. If not, then I'm going to have to get my bead reamer out and uh, ream these uh, pearls just a little bit. It looks like I'm going to have to ream the pearls. Which is a pity. It was... So, let's put this down here, get our bead reamer out. Grab one of the pearls. Now, actually, you should use water when you do this, but I'm just going to hopefully get it done really quickly here. We just need to ream enough that um, the wire will go through. yet. Okay, we went through. Come on, this much, so we need, yeah, about another quarter of an inch to the eight inch. One of the reasons you should do this un underwater is this is pearl dust and it can get in your lungs if you breathe it in. So you want to be careful of that. There we go. Got this one done. So now we'll put this one on the main wire here. Oh, come on. You just went through on the other wire. Don't give me flack. I actually went through relatively easily on the other piece of wire. There we go. So, down she goes. Now we put the big spacer, the rice crystal, the big spacer, and now this is going to have to sit for a while again, so till we ream out this other one, since it was the same, it would, didn't want to go through. So So as soon as we get these, this one reamed out, we'll get, put the other two beads on, and then we will hook it straight onto our bell, and then our necklace will be done. So work on this a little bit longer till we get this bead up, ready to go onto its, onto the wire. And hopefully we're getting close here. <laughs> Let's try it. to be going a little better on this side but not really on the other side <clears throat> so we'll ream her a bit more here Mm-hmm. 
Oh, there it is. It's all the way through. So, we'll see if it can go on to this one. Now, even though it went all the way, it, you could see it all the way through, it's still a little stiff, doesn't want to go down on here. So I'm thinking we'll just ream it just a teeny touch more, and that should give it just enough room to come on. See if we got it. There we go. There she is. So I'll push her down on the wire. Go. And now the little one. And the bicone. So there is our pendant piece. Now we need to hook it onto here. So what we need to do is bend our, come on you, just lay down there. We want this to be facing the same direction as the bottom one was, so we want to this way. Over and around and down, bring her over, oops, come on baby, leave a gap, and feed her on to our bale. Now ordinarily I'd tell you to face it backwards, but this can be going either way, the necklace, the beaded portion, so it doesn't matter. There we go. Now we'll hold where these come together. And wrap this up. Now remember, you're going to be wrapping this right here at the top. And you've got all these things that can get in your way. I'm going to wrap this by hand. I don't normally because um, I think I have really good control with pliers, but oh, I'm going to pull it with the pliers. It's loosening up and I don't like them when they loosen up. So I was thinking it might be easier without the pliers considering I've got all this space I need to um, be careful of. Oop, come here you. Now we want this to go to the back, so I think we're good there. So we're going to cut this excess wire off. And we're going to tuck it in, though being really careful of that bicone up on the top. And now let's see if we are straight um, as far as our cross and things are concerned. So, oh, that looks good. So there we go. There is our pendant. And even with the rubber tubing, that little crystal was trying to fall into that. But 
There we go. She's all done. Isn't that pretty? So now I will have to put all my excess things away, but there we go. She's all finished. So here is our beautiful necklace all finished. pendant piece and then up the line of all the pretty beads isn't that gorgeous I hope you enjoyed making this lovely necklace with me this has been Rose from In Rose's Garden and this is um, a, a lot of these things are from a $9 bead pack from Thunder Horse Descendant and the other things are from my stash, like the other pearls and the and the crystals are from my stash. So there we go. Again, this has been Rose from In Rose's Garden, and we will see you next time. Bye bye.